Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. In today's podcast, we're going to discuss the implications when your client is a group instead of an individual. Yeah. Hey, everyone. It's Joe here out of Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. Yeah, and today we're discussing the implications when your client is a group instead of an individual. And we're going to go through kind of each bullet and discuss, you know, the the pros or cons of of each each approach, right? So let me jump into the first one. So when you're dealing, you know, generally speaking, when your client is a group of people instead of an individual, on average, the number of meetings you're going to have to go through for this given project get much larger, much, much larger, right? Part of this could be just because it's a, a bigger project, right? But Often when you have a group of people, boy, there's a lot more meetings. Yeah, and in, in general, right, it, it just is the way it is. And the client can be many things, right? It can be external, it can be internal in the company and stuff like that. If we're trying to cater to more people, the number of meetings can just grow exponentially. That's, that's for sure. Um, the, the next point we have here is also the number of meetings. Yeah, that can be great, but the decision making process in general, right? Getting sign off on goals and what's a complete process or a complete uh, uh, end goal or whatever you call that is just hard to narrow down, I'd say, because the people in the group or the, the, the different people that you're meeting at different times, actually getting them to um, narrow down their goals is that's hard yeah yeah and it actually reminds me i'd say the the company that was the worst at it that i worked at was united way of america i was at their corporate headquarters for a couple of years and like they would schedule meetings to plan a meeting um and, you know and, and, and the one guy who we weren't even, we were friends but politically we we're very opposite but but still he's like why don't we actually just get some work done here instead of, you know, planning for another meeting later? Um, it's kind of crazy, but yeah, that getting people to figure out and align and agree on the goals that could be like a full-time job in itself. So yeah, it, it's, it's amazing when you, when you're not dealing with just one individual and then suddenly, well, Hey, I like what you said, but I'm going to have to go talk to Bob, you know, or we need to have Bob here too, to agree. It just, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot more work. Um, which has to do with the next one where you're basically trying to please everyone instead of someone, right? Like when you have to get everyone to agree that we're happy with this and people have different goals, you know, groups will have different goals and what they're looking for something out of the, the tool, whatever it is you're working on it is just, it's just a lot more work. Yeah. And I'd say I've, I've also had it where when it's a group, um, or um, multiple people, uh, you might even have um, participants being changed uh, throughout uh, yeah. the, the actual project, and then having to align them and and having to maybe still please uh, whatever they thought they'd get from the project. If you started with a specific goal with a few people then the group actually becomes larger and you still try to cater to all of the different, um, um, what, what do we call that, uh, hopes and, and dreams of all the rest of them. Yeah, that, that becomes really, really hard. And it, it hits into the next one, right? The, the scope of your role, right? The, the job in the process. You might have come in as uh, the one to do it because someone over here uh, liked you for that task, but now you're defending other people's um, different goals or takes on it or, or wishes from it, where that wasn't in the scope originally. Right? You have completely moved your role from being the one to do a simple thing that you would think, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I can I can help you with that. That that's pretty easy. And now you have different peoples with new takes on what uh, the project actually entitles. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, and actually, a, a different project we're working on. The um, you know, the the overall client is this one guy, and he's the one paying paying the bills, right? Paying them very nicely, I might add. Um, the client that actually the work he so he you know he works with this company. The other person that's going to be using the tool is someone else entirely. This other guy almost flat out said, I don't want to use this tool, like even though it's going to save him a ton of time. And so the the, the guy paying the bill, he kind of apologized. I'm like, uh, you know, I I understand. And, you know, I can, I can try to work with this client, you know, the, the guy that's going to be using it to educate him of why it's going to be helpful for him and why he should stick with it because it's, you know, it truly is going to be. People just don't like change, right? He's going to be the one to use it. He doesn't want to change. Um, but now my role is no longer developing the tool. I got to convince this person that like you really should use it. Right. And, and it's, again, it's just things you don't plan on. And when you have, when this project was first paid by the one guy and we, and he was the guy signing off and everything, it was so easy. But then suddenly we have these other people. Now I got to have other meetings with, and as long as your first client trusts you, you can say, look, I'll go meet a one-on-one with them and I'll try to get them on board. Right. Cause Boy, it's really difficult when you're all at the same meeting. That just makes it even harder where you're often bumping heads. So even though it's more time on your end, often I'll say, let's have a private meeting. But again, it's all this time, right? And if you're not billing by the hour, um, man, it it can just suck. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and I'd say the, the, the next we have is also the likelihood of things being changed, right? When you put more people into the mix, um, They'll, they'll have different takes on actually um, <laughs> what, what they'd like there to happen. So you might have built the functionality in one specific way and you're like, you're very happy with it. It's really hitting the nail uh, on, on what you were asked for. And now this other person or these other people come in and they're like, yeah, but shouldn't it also be able to do that? Or shouldn't it do it this other way? Right, the, the likelihood of things being changed midway or throughout, and then you have one meeting, and then you have another meeting, and now you have a meeting together, and all of a sudden they agree upon it needing to work in a totally different way. Just like wow, uh, I, I, yeah, yeah. It's and we, we're speaking from experience. I know we're not getting into details, but. I'm sure chime in, you guys, if you if this is different for you from what we're saying. But for those that are younger and haven't been involved with this kind of a process, when you have a lot of people involved, the likelihood of things of people project scope creeping out of you know in a crazy amount of stuff, it just it just gets unwieldy when you have the more people you have. The, the more intricacies, the more things that can go, not go wrong, but just diverge uh, and and not stay focused. Um, now, the next one I would say also, it has much more of a, to me, a functionality of the size of the company you're dealing with, uh, which is often, you know, with the larger projects or bigger companies with more people, uh, but getting paid from a, often a larger company, it can take months and months to get, you know, for them to actually pay on something. This client I mentioned earlier, he he will PayPal send me money. I'll say, hey, by the way, you're up to twenty four hundred dollars, and like he doesn't even get an invoice. He just sends it to me, no questions asked, right? And I'm like, this is you know, bless you if you're watching, bless you. <laughs> um, it's it's so nice because other people, it's documentation, and then they got to get go sign off, and they got to go to groups, and then if it's over a certain budget amount, it has to go up a level and get their manager sign off, and it's just, it's it can be crazy. And each of those things, that some, like a, a friend of mine works for a, a big company, and he's like, it can be like two or three quarters later that I get paid for a project that, you know, I, and he's often putting out money up front to buy things, and he's like, I, I don't have this kind of money to just outlay, you know, on these projects. Yeah. yeah, and I know that in general, that's a thing also in in, uh, in building and entrepreneurship and stuff like that. The, the amount of goodwill you may need to give out uh, to to a company, the, the amount of, of money you might have already spent expecting to get a payment for it at some point, it, it can be astronomical, right? It, it's something where if... A, company actually goes bankrupt the the amount of people that might um, be pulled down by might 
actually be quite large so stuff like that where money isn't transferred immediately or payment for goods or services and stuff like that doesn't happen uh, from day to day it just means that yeah it, it's hard to really fathom how much of that uh, really really factors in let me let me chime in there real quick on a, on a new one jackie because the the last one we have which you can jump in here on a minute on is uh this one flows in really well with what you just said because i didn't i didn't think about it until just now one of the hiccups, a lot of these, we've kind of laid it out where it's really a negative to work with a larger company. We're not trying to say it's negative. It's just really plan accordingly, right? But one of the ones with a smaller company is the likelihood that a company might go out of business and you not get paid, right? That's where a smaller company, it's much more likely where you might run into problems with that versus a larger company. It might take a while, but usually you get your money. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And, and that's also where it can actually be hard because if you find someone small enough they'll probably pay you immediately uh, if you find someone big enough you can be pretty sure that they'll pay you eventually and then there's those in the middle someone who's where you might be in doubt of uh, if they're gonna pay you or if they can pay you uh, after a certain amount of time so so it, it truly does depend on whichever client or group or whatever you you have to work with for sure so once you sorry um to derail us a little bit why don't you go ahead and do that last one um i have a few ones left i think um the... oh i'm sorry my bad all right well watch you do the next one yeah, uh, it's the one that's called uh, total dollar sign of the project, right? It It is the, the sheer amount of work you might have to do compared to the initial uh, charge you made. If, if you didn't actually go with a per hour uh, way of doing stuff, a larger group project or a project for a larger amount of people might also come with a bigger uh, bag of money but in general it's it's hard to know in f up front if you think you're working with an individual you might be thinking oh oh this is going to be a nice project i'll make some kind of profit from it and then they bring in more people and then you're all hard pressed to make sure that this actually becomes a profitable project for you. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and generally speaking, I, I'd agree, that, you know, the, the more number of people you have on the project when you're dealing with a group, they're often just bigger projects. And so the, the overall budget, it doesn't necessarily gonna make more money because of all the other things we mentioned. However, they often do mean it's a bigger project and there's more money involved uh, just make sure you find out ahead of time. These are these are the things you should be thinking about. Okay, when I take on a project, how do I make sure who's supposed to sign off? What you know, who has the the right, not just the right, the um authorization to be able to sign off on what things you know, and and what are they gonna be looking for? Right, these are certain things you can look at. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another big one is just, and I've run into this a lot at different companies, is the knowledge level of people that you're working with on a given project. Some people are almost even like at your level, right? And they just don't have the bandwidth to do the work, so they bring you in. Uh, other times, the, the many people at that, you know, the larger groups of people, there's people there that don't have a clue what you're talking about. And yeah. somehow you need to either A, convert everything that's basic enough for everyone to understand, or somehow educate that other person on the side or during the meetings, but try to find a way to, to break it down to them so that they can understand it. But it just still means, quote unquote, more work, right, for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that one of the higher ups at, at my current company won't see these broadcasts to listen to them. And I'm not going to mention- Still working, Jackie, so I think- it, But it's, it's amazing that the person has the position that they have. I'm pretty sure they're good at, at people and, and managing other leaders and stuff like that. But the amount of times I've explained the same concept uh, over and over um, it amazes me. And also when it actually begins moving into 
that person's turf or uh, supposed area of expertise uh, where I'm, I'm kind of baffled afterwards of thinking um, was I really the right person to help uh, <laughs> in, in this case because to me it was amazing that the person wasn't better at themselves and as you said yourself you can have all kinds of you can have people in the meetings where you're like hmm this person obviously obviously knows more or at least to the same degree as myself what's what what do they need me for and as you said bandwidth and other stuff can play in and um, i i'll i'll take the next one here joe as well um internal political dynamics i see this at work all the time i yeah. i I actually didn't know years back when we were sitting at specific development meetings. I was like, this is a good way of doing it. How about we implement it this way? I was putting out ideas, others were putting out ideas, and a person across me was putting out separate ideas, other ways of doing it. And for some reason, the project managers kept choosing the guy above uh, across the table's ideas yeah. not because i felt they were any better or uh, and sometimes they were really not they were truly not better they they were just different and <laughs> it it took it took me a few weeks because we it's it's such a large company i thought uh, to actually figure out that he had more stars on his shoulders than me oh. i was like I really didn't know and for some reason <laughs> it was just like the way he was treated wasn't apparent to me at the beginning but afterwards I was like oh oh that's why fair enough fair enough I would have been nice to have known that that's why they keep choosing his ideas over the rest of us and that's just internal political dynamics okay so some of these people are his daily uh, employees or whatever you would say so of course they immediately heed to what their boss uh, comes up with not because his idea was uh, straight up bad but they could probably have been better uh, and to me it was just weird that they kept agreeing so much with his ideas compared to others instead of dis discussing which of the ideas might have been better so yeah yeah and, and you can flip it a little bit i mean it's still similar to what you're saying but you might step into a situation where the person who brought you in for whatever reason you know he fired that person's best friend and no matter what you propose it's going to be shot down or fought tooth and nail, right? And so it's just when you're dealing with a group, there can be a lot of other things you're not aware of that just are are a much bigger pain. And that's, it's not that you shouldn't do stuff with groups. It's just keep that in mind and kind of keep that in the background and understand who's going to make the decisions, who can sign off. You know, this is also, again, why, even though I don't like it, when you budget things by the hour type of thing, it kind of negates a lot of these issues where if you don't budget by the hour and you just bid a project, suddenly you're the one eating all these other costs because how do you, how do you, you know, find a way to make up for that, right? How do you, how do you get more money? Cause, oh, I had, to, I mean, you can say I had to spend X amount of time and maybe what you do is you, you bid on the project and you say, Hey, there's coaching time or there's time where I have to use to go to meetings and stuff. That'll be billed by the hour, right? And that, you know, if there's a lot of other meetings I have to go to, I get paid for that. If they're not, I don't get paid. It's fine. But I'd say the, the bigger established uh, companies that, that we work with or hire in or whatever you would call that, um, they when they have the foot in the door, so to speak, that's, that's the only way I really see them doing it, right? They, they won't just put a person on the premise and be like yeah you paid us some amount that's that's great no it will be a per hour or per monthly agreement or whatever it is right it it's it's not just a lump sum 
well, here you go, use all of this person's time. Um, the, it, it, the only real way of doing stuff like that when it becomes prolonged is to charge something per hour. Yep. So awesome. I'd love to hear from you guys if, if you have anything else that you, you know, do you like working on things when you're working for a group rather than an individual? Which do you prefer? Do you, you know, do you find one to be, you know, painful? Do you make more money at one? Do you care? Right. Good yeah. Time. Yeah. Let us hear, hear everything because absolutely both things have uh, its merits. All right. Cheers. Yeah. Bye.